Welcome to BCS, the Chartered Institute for IT. We're looking at why you should take a look at agile methods for development today. Um, we have uh, around the table three people from different areas of this. Uh, just by way of introduction, a recent survey by version one uh, found that 55% of respondents claimed that agile methods have been successful in 90 to 100% of cases. Uh, on the other hand, some people say Agile methods don't scale properly. And there's a middle ground as well. In 2008, a Software Engineering Institute uh, technical report talked about CMMI and Agile working together. Why not embrace both? Well, to discuss these issues, we have with us Siamak Sham, who's a director at RadTech. Welcome, Siamak. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, Dale Titcombe from BCS, who runs a team of Agile development, so he's uh, got the practitioner angle. Welcome, Dale. Thank you. And we have Stuart Reed, uh, who's the uh, Chief Technology Officer at TSG. Welcome, Thanks. Stuart. Now, let's start off um, with, with something pretty straightforward, I hope. What do we mean by the terminology Agile? Let's just define uh, our terms as we kick off. Uh, I'm already getting smiles here. Perhaps it's not as easy as that. Stuart? Well, it's pure Agile, which <laughs> is defined by a very elite group of gurus or experts mm -hmm. uh, and then there's actually what people do. Okay. So there's probably a, a very small part of the industry doing pure agile and the other people who call themselves agile are compromising because doing pure agile is quite quite difficult. Is it better to actually compromise and, and work in the real world, or should we be aiming for pure agile, CMAC? I don't think there would be ever pure agile. I, th I think context drives quite a lot of customization. Um, although the word pragmatism is now used in a, in a negative way, but we have to be pragmatic. There are occasions, and particularly the agile advocates, all invite folks to actually see the context and uh, customize to the context. And in my opinion, Agile is purely a reaction to the things that didn't work. So quite a lot of times, folks talk about Agile in terms of what is it? It is, we had the norm, and in reaction to that, a group of folks said, we need to do something else. And as it happened, that the, the name and the, and the title Agile was attached to it, but it's the reaction to the norm, or the norms that we knew and this exists. So Agile is always going to be contextual or the Agile implementations. It's never, I, in my opinion, it will never become pure as we all know about any other part of science. Mm. And what's your view of Agile? Well, for my part, I mean, I, I don't kind of labour any long definition of, of, of the term for, for, what, for what we adapt to in our development team. I, I really take the viewpoint that uh, we're continuously inspecting and adapting what we're doing in order to try and make it better. Um, and, and I think as, as long as we, we demonstrate that, I think we can reasonably say that we're demonstrating agility. Um, agility to sort of perform better, get better software um, built in shorter, uh, for shorter time scales. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that's, that's my view on it really. Uh, okay. As long as you, you have a, a commitment to yourself to uh, align your needs as a development team uh, to those of the business and can can deliver and can you know honestly say to yourself that we are we are understanding the requirements of what we need to build and, mm. and, and deliver back to the business then you know by whatever method you do that and whatever agile techniques and tools that you use and they won't be pure in that context I, 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 I concede that um, you know that that's that's agility for me um, in, in, in practical terms. Okay. But there, are some, there are some hard and fast rules. Okay. I mean, if you're going to de be delivering or having iterations that are longer than a month, then most people would say, okay, well, that's not responding quickly enough to call it agile. Mm. So I think there are some hard and fast rules where you're crossing the line and, and people are going, no, sorry, but yes. no, you might be using a few of the agile practices but actually you're not agile. Yeah, I agree yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So why, uh, why, agile, uh, why is agile adoption I increasing as it is? Because it's increasing quite substantially, isn't it? It's, in <laughs> it's increasing because management perceive it as a way of saving money. And they, they want to be able to deliver stuff quicker. Mm -hmm. Because if you deliver stuff quicker, you make money quicker. And people sell them agile and go, well, this will, this will give you that, it will yeah. give you it quicker. It will typically make things a bit quicker, but 
that's not really the main thing. I mean, that's what management typically asks for. Yes. I mean, your version one survey would tell you that. Mm -hmm. That's what they ask for. What they actually get is subtly different. They get good response to change, which is probably what Agile is targeted at. It's, it's being able to say to the business, we'll build you what you want now, not what you asked for two years ago. Yes. You ask for something, and depending on our iteration cycle, we can probably deliver it relatively quickly. Because that was a, a great uh, criticism of projects in the past, wasn't it? The, by, by the time they delivered, the original terms were almost irrelevant because things had moved on too quickly. I think exactly as you said, um, I think we, we shouldn't lose the sight of the fact that ultimately the, it's the business that suffers. So it, when the business suffers in terms of return on investment, then that return, of, return on investment is that when we deliver something, is it appropriate? Is it, is it actually what the customer, the market, and we want it? And is it delivering at the highest quality that it can be delivered? All of these things ultimately can make or break a business. And the Border, border Control uh, Agency actually lost 750 million. 2010, it was reported even on Metro that it lost seven, it actually wrote off 750 million. Um, in 2005, Sainsbury's wrote off $570 million on a uh, stocking system. These cannot be sustained. Mm. And I think somehow people are reaching out to do something different. And at the moment, and I must emphasize, at the moment, the best we have, the alternative we have, folks have grouped them together and under one roof and said, this is agile. And that's why version one, when they ask you a question, although the surveys I haven't seen the questions, how they are leaned, but the fact is that they ask that having implemented agile, and that has to be in the context of in comparison to the old stuff. Mm. Has it worked? And they said that it shows, it shows improvement almost everywhere you go. They say it shows improvement. And that is the critical factor in assessing whether a methodology is better than before. But I'm sure we all agree that in the future, Agile will be evolving to become either something better or something different. But it is that key thing that the business is starting to realize that we can no longer lose as much revenue as we did on software. IEEE reported one trillion was spent on 2005 on IT hardware and software, of which 15 to 30 percent was either wrote, written off just before or just after. And these are the figures that one cannot sustain for too long. Absolutely. Um, those top line figures are obviously enormous. How do agile methods affect? Uh, Let's, let's go down a scale to to a team like, so like you have, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a few scales. Uh, and how do those agile methods affect a team as it works together? And yeah, so so a, a little bit of context that we're a we're a, a, a small development team, but mm -hmm. yeah, if you if you read the uh, sort of the um, the Scrum methodology, says so maybe we're a perfect size team to, for implementing Scrum. You know, sort of five developers. Uh, two testers um, and a sort of roving business analyst slash project manager. Um, and I mean, what we see is a real um, ramp up in collaboration because everybody um, owns the same work stream for an iteration. You know, uh, previously, you know, rightly or wrongly, um, a, a larger project that we we're working on, uh, we would separate development streams per developer and then look to sort of integrate all of those together into, into the sort of delivered solution. Um, but I think what we, what we lost out on there is, is the collaboration of, of each individual um, and not only each developer but the collaboration of, of people um, from, from different skills and backgrounds um, who are really uh, taking a, a lead jointly to understand uh, at a much granular level the requirement. Now, a lot of that is down to the quality of, you know, the, the, in, in Scrum, the user stories um, that, that aren't developed for us. Um, but just, just having all, all, this, all of the ceremonies that come along with Scrum, you know, that, that regular uh, daily um, conversation and, and check back on what I'm doing versus what I'm supposed to be doing, you're, you're far, far less likely 
to get lost in a, in, a, in a task that actually doesn't need doing at all or you've, you've misinterpreted so ultimately risk at worst uh, misdelivering. Um, and, and, and for me it's, it's, it's practical in that sense. I think it gets the best out of um, a group of people if those people are truly uh, enthusiastic about using that method of, of delivery. Yes. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> and I think from the actual perspective of the team, mm. Agile is fun to do. It's more motivating. So typically you go and if you can watch Agile teams beside traditional teams, the Agile teams are, are fairly obviously happier and, and, and you'd expect, therefore, perhaps be more productive. Yes. The, the difficulty is that uh, I don't think it's actually that difficult to persuade IT people mm. that Agile is a nice thing to do because mm. they, they're given autonomy, the team are allowed to be self-organising. It's, it's a nice environment to work in. It's actually getting the customers to recognise that they can't just go, yep, yeah, OK, well, we want more productivity, we want less failures, let's go Agile, they have to make a big commitment to going Agile. I, I, I completely agree with that um, and, and, and most recently without boring you with all of the details, um, the, the project that we're, that we're undertaking at the moment uh, using Scrum as, as, as the approach um, and we're between a half and two thirds way through the, the, um, the solution that we're building. Um, and you know our business asked us um, to see the functional specification, and we haven't got one. <laughs> you know, we can present to you in, a, in you know in uh, in in a, in a format that you might better understand the, the user stories, but you know that didn't answer the question for yeah you know where's where's the functional specification for for what you're building right now? It's a bit more organic than that, but that's that's you know that is difficult, and I appreciate to um, to sell to everybody in every role in, in, in any organisation, I would, I would imagine, from, from the smallest to the largest, unless there is a, um, an understanding that everybody's going on this journey together and we will use these methods and these techniques and understand one another's paths yeah. um, But it's easy to when roles. it works. So once yeah. they've got experience of it working, mm. yeah, it's easy to sell, but it's, you can't sell it to a, to a stockbroker who sat at his desk and is making however many millions of pounds potentially in an afternoon to say actually we, we need you for half a day every two weeks because we need you to accept the system mm. and it's all but, <laughs> but I might have lost a million million dollars yes. in an afternoon by just coming and watching or performing this acceptance test in which case y you have to really make sure that that works you, you have to come up with a solution. You either have to persuade them that they, they are going to take part, or you have to come up with some compromise. Mm -hmm. and, and then you get to one of the Precisely. pragmatic compromises. And that's why we, mm. I'm sure we all remember that 10, 12 years ago, people would be asking that, so what happens to a BA then? Is the role of BA is completely gone in a system? Is what happens to the other roles that we used to have? And we are gradually seeing in companies that, exactly as you said, that they couldn't afford or offer the person who's that is, who is the customer, the only customer. Then we came up with some proxies, and these are the. As I said, regrettably, pragmatism is becoming a dirty word, but this is, this is what they see, that a trader that can make, make potentially hundreds of millions of pounds cannot be directly involved. Therefore, in one of the banks that we work with, they had an ex-trader turned to BA, now presenting many stakeholders, and that could be a pattern. But these are the mutations that we're seeing that due to pragmatism, due to what's happening in the context, there are some mutations already happening. 